And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, with more Burning Wheel. So, you guys are in the Sorry. present situation. We fade in on you, lodged away in, like, a shady alleyway across the street from some, uh, some like, larger construction buildings. Um, among which are some, uh, like, it's on the dock front, right? So there's some warehousing going on. There's a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, buildings here that are like combined private residence with storage. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I remember being described to us last time, um, this area has like a lot of uh, like a lot of boxes stacked up in front of the main entrance. Uh, that kind of made like a, a very a small but impromptu maze. And mm -hmm. we find you guys like down a street from that. Yes. And you, of course, not alone. You have brought two people with you that we've seen before uh, that Chris is going to have to come up with names for. <laughs> really? Name of your dudes, Chris. I don't... Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, say... Bob and Bobby. No. Bob and Eddie. It could be Bob and Bobby. I don't care. Uh, I do though, that's the problem. You've given me something I now care about thinking about. Uh, How dare you, Daniel? Goon 1 and 2? Let's say... Yeah, let's, let's, let's say, um, Joseph and Vinny. Joseph and Vinny. Yes. Cool. Excuse me a second. His phone rang. Oh, mine, too. <clears throat> mine too. So while Chris is away answering his phone, the two of you can ruminate on what you want to do uh, about the situation in front of you. Could I reply my brother from his uh, retort last time? I don't feel like it. I mean, it's it's so out of like. That would be so out of sync. Just wait two weeks to hear the response, right? Well, that's, you that's... decided I couldn't answer him back. Yeah, that's because the session ended there. So whatever scathing retort you had is is lost to like the behind the scenes footage of this series. <laughs> sure. Basically, what happened was the minute it was called off, we went off the set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a bell rang and someone yelled cut and just everyone scrammed to their trailers. With you just standing, but hey, hey, hey! Oh, I'm not okay. Done with you. <laughs> okay, what's been said that I've missed while I was... Nothing of import. Okay. Yeah, we haven't imported we anything. Import anything. So, we have the situation, if I recall correctly, it was also like just about to be sundown. Um, so everything is kind of a wash in, in gold presently. Mm. That's the situation we find you in. We should just steal that. That would be much easier. I'm sure some idiot somewhere initially thought about, like, stealing the gold that the sun threw onto things, but they found out that it wasn't that profitable. Um... That sounds like a thing in a, in a changeling game or something. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Alright, so anyway. you're in that situation. Uh, a couple, like two streets down from where you are, uh, there's a warehouse. There's some like, uh, there's a lot of crates stacked up in front of it. On the other side of the of the building, there is just the harbor front, right? The, like a large area for for um, for storing shipment for ships, um, for for the river boats that come by. And uh, aside from that, you like every now and then you see some of the patrolmen that guard the place like walk by. Uh, they become visible from, like, between the crates surrounding the area. So, that's where you're at. What do you do? Remember what you said? patrol man. Um, if I remember what you said last time, the actual... Are we, are we, are we, are we, we're inside the warehouse, aren't we? Can we see the guards? Uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes you can, like... If you... You just need to squint and just wait for the patrol to take them in the, into the right place, and you can you can observe them. Yeah. That's the thing is that I remember, I remember what I remember last time there was well, I could, there's like a group of say two to three patrolling around the building and then there's like two on the front door. As far as Evelyn is aware, there's a, a half dozen guards. 
Right, okay. So, but yeah, you can see them. Do you want to like ask me any questions about them or what did you just want to know if, if they were there? Yeah, um, how, how, uh, how well armed are they? Um, like the, the one, I think the one thing you can see obviously without having to give me a check is that every time you see one they're carrying a quarter staff okay if you want to know more than that i am going to have to bother you for a check uh which check that would be a perception check okay give me a second just pure perception stat not observation observation is spotting hidden things which this is not so you use observation when, when I'm trying to murder you in your sleep, but you use perception for anything that's not actively hiding from you. Okay, what's the base <clears throat> obstacle? One? Uh, so I, I get from that that you want to do it. So your yes. intention is, what is your intent? Uh, to, to observe them and to find out what I can about, uh, about sort of their comp, how, how many there are and how competent they look so I can evaluate, so I can decide whether or not to take them head on or try and be a bit extra sneaky. Okay, so to me, and I, I'm not sure I'm applying this correctly, but I think this is a graduate test. This is not about do you succeed, this is about how many successes do you get and that revealing a certain level of information to you. Yes. I think that's how that would play. So in that case, I, uh, I think... I'm not sure that there's any consequence for failing a graduate test. Tick. Uh, nice there wasn't. Well, obviously, getting no successes. Uh, it has no fixed obstacles. It's simply a matter of testing an ability and noting how many successes are generated. Often the case for research, searching an area, or other knowledge-based skills. The amount of information distributed by the GM is dependent on the number of successes generated. Uh, the GM can call for graduates. Actually, um, I would normally say that this is the case, but but there is actually something at stake here. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a um, it's gonna be a standard test instead. I'm going to put the obstacle at obstacle 2. Uh, if you fail the test, um, you will, uh, you will, uh, and you'll get advantage because it's like, it's dark and whatever shadows there are, are pretty deep at this point. Um, but you, uh, you go out there and you want to like get a good look at them. If you fail this test, uh, the consequence is going to be that you get minimal information or you might like, you, you get a good look at them, but they notice you. And they'll like they'll start talking and start being on their guard, and that will make approaching more difficult because they get like a suspicion of that that creepy guy over there is watching. Yeah, yeah. So that's the consequence for failing. Um, now you can. Uh, I will let you if you have it. I will let you uh, roll uh, stealth as a link test. Uh, let's see. No, that's not that's not any of my. Uh... Could he use inconspicuous instead? He could use inconspicuous instead if he has it. Uh, yes, I do have that. So if I fork in inconspicuous. Uh, yeah. So that uh, I think that would be. Um, I will let you fork it actually. Test? I wanted I wanted to let you do it as a link test, but I I think we'll just use it for a fork. So just to keep it simple. Okay. So, and you said I had. Act, um. God damn it! I'm wrong because you can't you can't um you can't fork a skill into a stat. So and you're all right. exception. So you need to make me a um, a link test with it. So Remind me how I do that. You uh, you like what you're gonna do is essentially you want to be inconspicuous about it. So you kind of wait and time it until some locals are moving by, and then mm -hmm. you you want to like make out of the make out of the the alleyway and kind of approach and get a look at them. Then go down another alleyway and go back around and come up to your friends again. That would be the way to approach them using it inconspicuous. So I like hiding in plain sight. Okay, but um, how do I actually? Roll. So what you want to do for that is that's gonna be really simple because these guys are the a they're drunk you don't know that but they are um, the drunk on duty and they're not they don't really care that much so it's gonna be a simple up I'm gonna say it's gonna be an up one uh, up one or up two. Well, that's up to you. <laughs> it's going to be up two, but it's going to be um, like obstacle two, uh, inconspicuous test, uh, but you're going to get advantage. What does advantage mean? It means he gets one extra die. So I roll inconspicuous first and then perception or? That's correct, sir. 
One modifier, two obstacle. You can do it! Yay! Look at that. That's nice. Okay, so you succeed in being inconspicuous. So upon your approach, they're probably not going to notice you. Uh, so give me that perception check and uh, take a um, take an advantage die for getting closer to them yep. as part of your inconspicuous action. Yep. And uh, and take uh, a, a, another bonus die for succeeding in the link test. Okay. Um, and you mentioned an advantage due to the time of day. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to stick you with one advantage because uh, getting two advantage die is like for a significantly major advantage and that's not what okay. this is. That's fine. And obstacle two again. Uh, yeah, uh, obstacle two perception test. Okay. Awesome, you succeed. Okay, so uh, so just like describe this this to us as Nikki does this, and I will tell you what he sees. Okay, so noticing the group of civilians, he does full on Assassin's Creed and just blends in with the passing by, sort of um, a master of looking inconspicuous without you know looking conspicuously inconspicuous, and is able to put himself in a position where he's able to. Uh, pass by the guards relatively closely, keeping an eye on their their stance, whether or not they're drunk, which you mentioned they are, what kind of... Um, how they hold their weapons, how sort of... How, how much they communicate with each other... and just seeing if, have, if there's any... If, if they deviate from any set patterns of movement, if, they, if they're deliberately sort of staggering their their patrols cool okay so here's, here's what you manage to observe as you walk past uh, as you walk past them so you get closer and you kind of spot the like some of the patrolmen in and out between the boxes every now and then you can't really stay for a long time and take a good look at it but you do get an impression uh and yeah, of course. you get your intention of course so what uh, what you get is uh, a the guys are armed with quarter staffs as their primary weapon, but all of them are carrying a knife, as well. Uh, all of them have a knife belted at the waist. Uh, aside from that, they are they're all wearing. Um, I can hear myself. Yeah, sorry, my headset fell out. Okay. Okay. And no, that didn't fix it. There we go. That's suit to fix it. Okay, so. Quarterstaff in hand, knife in belt. This is universal for all of them. Uh, all of them are armored. All of them are carrying like um, like a chest piece of uh, of hard leather. Uh, okay. That's that's uh, what they're wearing in terms of armor. It's just a chest piece, but it's there. Um, and all of them have like they're all wearing outdoor clothing. So all it's summertime, so it's like thin cloaks, but it's essentially like of some kind of like uh, oiled uh, oiled uh, material. To, to prevent in case of summer showers. And all of them have that cloak pinned on, uh, like, pinned on with a, a single red sword looking pin. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you so... see, uh, you see, like, you get an impression that, that matches um, Evelyn's description that there are about a, uh, about a dozen, but that's outside, and you get, like, you see at one point as you pass by, you see... Uh, by like the only unshuttered window that there is a lamp light lit inside, so there might be more. Mm -hmm. So there's a dozen outside. Uh, half a dozen. Half a dozen outside. Yes, as I say, a dozen. There's six people outside. Okay. Um, okay. So once the, once I've been able to make that uh, observation, that patrol around, I'm able to return to the group. Uh, they communicate. Uh, to answer your remaining questions, they do communicate with each other. Uh, not like they don't give reports in, but they chit chat a lot, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you can you get the impression that they're like you see one of them like is taking a breather, but sitting with a box with a bottle in hand. So you get the impression that they're they're being chill about their duties, but they they do communicate and and move as if these are hired professionals in air quotes. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so what I'm learning from this is basically that while they are they are quite well armed and they bear a crest of 
uh, of, a, of a, a legitimate establishment. They are not taking the duty fully seriously, yep. but they're still dangerous. And if we're able to take them on, we should be quick. We should be quiet. Uh, and if we're lucky, we might even be able to take some of their gear for ourselves. Ooh. Yep. I mean, the gang, the gang, and the player characters could benefit from having some additional uh, weapons and armor if needs be. Yep. But it depends whether or not we've got time for that. So that'll be a secondary concern. Okay. Uh, with that all then learnt, I'm able to make my way. I'm able to sashay my way back to um, to. To the, to the to the twins to Evelyn and my two cronies, and relay all of this information along with uh, Nikki's personal observations, which is basically uh, they may be they are they're drunk, so the reactions will be slow, but don't underestimate them. They're still well armed and armoured. If we're going to take them on, we need to be we need to be quick. We all need to go for it and try and keep the voice the the, uh, the volume down. Does any of you have like um, city wise or um, city wise, mercenary wise, uh, outlaw wise, or soldier wise? Let's just check. Let's have a look. I'm working towards city wise. Mm. I have nope, graveyard wise. But but once they're dead, I know how to bury them. If none of you have the applicable wise, I will allow you to. I mean, I will not necessarily allow you. You can make a uh, an an untrained uh, vice check. Um, you can check with uh, perception flat to see if you know anything about the the pin they're wearing. Sure. Okay. Yay! Perception. Let's do that. Let's not have like uh, three set. I mean, we could, I guess, have. Yeah. Okay. So it's fine. Do you want to make three separate checkers, or do you want to help each other? I want to do a separate check. Okay, in that case, I will. I'll assist. I'll assist him. Okay. Uh, what's the obstacle? And what do I get for modifiers from him assisting one? So, first of all, um, like, tell me how this works out. Like, how you like you talking about what the pin means, and if you know about it, if you've seen it somewhere, is that like how this is playing out? I think so, and I might have seen it on my uh, my trips around city. Okay. Well, in that case, um, this is going to play out like... Uh, if you, Rasmus, you're going to make the check. Uh, the obstacle for the check is uh, obstacle 3. Well, I'm going to make a check. I don't know if AJ wants to make a separate check. But yeah, Chris wanted to assist me. Did uh, AJ, did you want to help or did you want to... Um, do you want to make your own check? He makes his own check. Okay. So, each of you give me an obstacle 3 check. Um, but the obstacle is doubled because you don't have the, it unlocks as obstacle six. Um, <clears throat> yikes. And you, Rasmus, you get a bonus die for, uh, for Nicholas helping you. Yep. So it's so not much a bonus die, it's how If you, uh, if you succeed at this, you get what you want, you know about these guys. Uh, if you fail at it, they don't mean anything to you. Uh, it's probably it to to you. It would not denote that they're uh, from a unit as much as it would just be like they're all wearing the same novelty item. Yep. So base obstacle six. Was it? Yeah. Whoa! Right, there you go. Wow! Hello! Beautiful. That's amazing. Okay, so Minnow, you fail. Um, so I have no idea what they are. That's true. So, so you don't really know. It's to you. It's more like uh, these are probably novelty badges, right? Um, but I'm wearing one flying around like a bird. It's true, but Shihao, uh, you maybe you don't know to begin with, but after talking it out with Nikki, uh, you kind of like you get the clear impression that, oh wait a minute, you know what this is? This is a uh, dependent of the Ruby Racer Company. This is a company of mercenaries taking in outlaws and ex-soldiers uh, who don't really, who can't find their way uh, around in the world. Oh. Uh, Ruby Racer Company is known as like, it has like a, a mixed reputation in the sense that mm -hmm. it is widely employed, especially in this like general area. But because they take like, they have... Um, they don't have like the the strictest recruitment uh, code. They take like people from different walks of life. Uh, they're not known to be the most reliable. Um, the thing they are reliable about though are their own. Um, 
if you if you kill these guys, uh, the company will will make an effort of tracking you down. That is, if you leave any witnesses. So, if you can if you can if you hurt them, then it probably won't matter. If you kill them, and someone sees you, you're gonna get hunted. Uh, but if you sneak in un undetected, or you just murder all of them without any witnesses, then you should be golden. Okay. Um, I definitely let Nikki know in a kind of like Eureka moment. Hmm. Well, that certainly complicates things. Also, before we go on, Chris, um, you can mark a routine and conspicuous uh, routine perception check. AJ, you don't get to mark a difficult perception because you need to succeed on perception checks to get them. And Rasmus, you can mark a difficult perception check, and so can Chris. Neat. Difficult perception, okay. Um, well, <clears throat> it's only difficult if we don't kill all of them, I guess. Mm. Oh, well, it's either kill none or kill all. Mm. Yeah, we're not the best at... You know, it's going to be tough as nuts to kill none of them. Well, we'll just have to be thorough then. Evelyn spits sideways and she's like, it's not going to be a problem. Let's just kill them. Why, do we even, why are we even worrying about the shit? Oh, worry about everything, love. Don't worry. Alright. I'm in agreement with Evelyn. Let's okay. just kill them. All right. Yeah, okay. she she cracks a smile and and looks expectantly at Nikki. Okay. Evelyn, Minamir, Vinny. I want you to take off on that way. He says, pointing towards the uh, pointing towards the side of the warehouse that the patrol is due to uh is due to come out or come around to mm. uh, not the way not the way they're going at any point and then he says uh how's he joseph we'll take the ones at the front if the other ones come around and see us then the rest will be able to flank them and we can take them on all at once how would you like for me to take them out uh, use some discretion, but if it gets too much, go all out. Mm. He smiles, clearly delighted. Mm. Just be aware of witnesses. We get witnesses, we get trouble. There won't be any. Mm. I'll hold you to that. He nods, and with a serious expression, like, yep, you can definitely do that. Okay, so that's the plan. Cool. So what do you set about doing? Uh, well... <clears throat> that. Yeah. I send the others... Uh, I send... Well, I, I, indicate for, uh, I indicate for the first group, for Evelyn, Minamir and Vinny, to actually make their way off um, to the side of the warehouse and obviously try not to get spotted, just look like a couple, of, like just a group. Heading in that direction. You want me to be inconspicuous? Uh, oh, perfect. Oh, goody. Be, be, yeah. incons be inconspicuous in your conspicuousness. Um, Just and then the re bloke walking over the street. Yes. Okay, and then the rest of us who are going to go for the two guards at the front. I want um, I want Jihauji at, at the front. I want um, Joseph. And myself following up behind him because we're going to be we're going to go two on one against the other guard. I'm trusting Jihadji to take one of the guards by himself. Yeah, I would have definitely preferred magic then. <laughs> well, you are at least good with a spear. That's yes. true. Okay, so Do you have an edge that your brother doesn't have, even though he makes more damage than you. You have the skill. I don't. <laughs> so what? What is uh, like, uh, uh, like in like briefly narrate the approach for me here because 
Oh. You you going out yes. and actually approaching them is is relevant to whether or not you get spotted, right? Um. Oh yeah. Did you want me to be inconspicuous? If possible. In that case, I do that. Uh, yeah, my approach is basically th thusly. Um, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to. I, I explain that once we get to a certain point near the front, I want Jihad to go ahead and take one of them. But until we get the, till we get to where we're within range of the two guards, the plan is that both of them will be basically be I'll have my arm one arm over each of their shoulders and acting the part of a drunkard and they'll be like the, my two very irritated companions who are basically carrying me home and we're going past them sure but the idea is, is that I'm deliberately being noticeable but noticeable in a way that makes me look like I'm not a threat right you're you're blending into a crowd essentially um yes so uh, I'll I'll take a um... I'll take an inconspicuous check to represent this. This is not like you... So this is not like a, a, a throng of people walking down the streets and you hiding in that in that same sense. But this is more like you just kind of walking down there and making an effort of being unworthy of notice. In essence, yes. Uh, I assume there's no... Hmm. Is, there any, is there any, are there any advantages or any things I can uh, fork? I mean, you still get advantage for them being drunk. Do I assist him, or do I roll a separate inconspicuous test? Uh, you, you, the best person, uh, sorry, the worst, the worst person at being inconspicuous rolls, and the other people assist that person. I, I have B3 in inconspicuous. Uh, that's exactly the same as me. <laughs> okay, then just pick who, pick who, who gets to fail this check if it goes wrong. Um, it'll be me. Okay. In that case, I shall assist him. Cool. So, you get a helping die from Shihao, you get an advantage die for these guys being drunk. Um, the condition for failing is... Uh, it should mention that the obstacle is... This is a versus test, so they're gonna be opposing you with their own check. Yep. Uh, if you fail, uh, they'll, uh, they won't attack because you'll just be like... You will, you, they will notice you, right? You will not get what you want. You will be worthy of notice on your approach instead. And uh, you won't be able to, probably won't be able to take them by surprise unless you change the situation. Okay, fair enough. Um, so what's the obstacle then? Yeah, the, the obstacle is based on uh, what they roll when they, uh, when they try and spot you. So, so I'm just gonna, oh, I'm gonna make their perception check first. And then that'll be the difficulty, uh, that'll be the obstacle for your check. So this guy has perception four. Uh, there are two people like sharing his patrol route so he has two helping dice and that's it and then he has one disadvantage for uh being drunk, drunk. <coughs> so it's just down to one extra die um, um uh, so aj what what's up i'm just asking you not to roll any successes for him oh, okay cool i'll try please no too late yep Many, many successes. Okay, so he, they're yeah, sitting cozy on three successes uh, between them. Uh, so six, your obstacle so is three. <laughs> Roll some sixes. Yay! Woo! You even have a six you can roll on. Cool, so this is a case of you being tied uh, on this. Um, do you want to use fate to uh, explode that six? Because if you don't... Use fate, use fate. Yeah, if you don't, they, they win, because they are the defender in this situation. Just see if I got any fate points. I do, I will spend fate point. Cool. See if I can get a success on that. So I just need to roll a 1d6. Yes, 1d6, so. and mega success, please. Yeah. Don't say that, because now you said that, it's just cursed. Jinx. No, that's in another one. Oh, that's a shame. It, it it did get jinxed, so... Are you sure you it. don't have grey dye? Um, take a routine test towards your inconspicuous. Aww. Um, Rasmus, uh, you have the same inconspicuous status he does, so take a routine test towards your inconspicuous as well. Done. 
Um, so on your approach, right? You you're being drunk. You're being rowdy sailor assholes home from duty approach, uh, whatever. And I think they notice you explicitly because of that. Like they might not have noticed you if you were just like quietly minding your own business, but some one of them stops and takes notice, and the other two kind of also stop and take notice, and they probably notice that like. Um, that Shihao is carrying a spear, and both you and uh, and Joseph are like wearing knives. So mm. like, there's a moment where they're like, "Hang on a minute," and also, yeah, they're Jihau they're aware rather, of you. Also, Jihao is rather spoopy. Yeah, they oh, they they're close enough for that. Right they now. can't really appreciate the spoopiness of Shihao because he's uh, because he's you know he's basically just another silhouette in the night. But he is. Uh, they're aware, and they they are presently not gonna be surprised if you jump them so meanwhile as this as we see this approach happening the camera just pulls up we get the crane shot of the of the warehouse and it just pulls up over to the the alley next to it where we see um evelyn and uh, evelyn and minnow and uh, vinnie make their own approach uh minnow you're a, you're i want to say like ideally i think um I think now I'll, I'll let you decide how you approach this. Like, what's your fix? Uh, your fix? Your stake in the fiction here. How do you approach the warehouse? He is gonna walk casually because if you pretend you're supposed to be there, the you just oh, he's just walking. Okay, so it's so oh, inconspicuously, just cool. less rowdy. Do you have inconspicuous unlocked? Yep. Cool. So give me. A, let's see. That would again be an inconspicuous test opposed by their perception. In this case, there are two people um, that would be able to spot you instead of three. So I'm gonna take just a flat check. Uh, he gets plus one. The healthy. one thing we're very good at, all of us, that is being inconspicuous. It's true. So Don't jinx it. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll. <laughs> all right. So you make me an inconspicuous test you get a helping die from vinny and a helping die from uh, from evelyn so i get two yeah are they also drunk uh what no no your friends are not drunk no the no, guards. them the idiots uh yes yes they are but uh don't, that don't apply advantage for that now that i think about it because i have detracted dice from their pool because they're drunk, so you don't also get advantage on top of that. So modifiers are two. Yep. And Arthur, no. Obstacle is two. Let's see how this works. Boom. <laughs> there you go. So you approach, basically, you're just walking down the alley. These guys are walking, like, doing the patrol route. They don't see a threat approach. They just see some people walking nearby. Uh. That's how you do it, guys. Yes, yes, all right. All right. <laughs> so I think, like... Um, I get a routine test, right? Uh, yeah, you do. You earn a routine test towards your uh, inconspicuous. Yay! So let's, let's take that first. What um, cookie? You, you're approaching. What, what, what happens when you approach um, Minnow's group? Well, we were supposed to be quick about it. Yeah. Evelyn wants to murderize them. And Vinny is just being Vinny. Mm. So the minute we, I think we let them pass, and then just turn around and kill them cool. as swiftly as possible. So you like you wait for them to, you slow your yeah, stride. Like, you know, walking quietly past them, and then turning around the second they just walk past to kill them. Sure, right. So strike, <laughs> yeah, counts. You, you strike them from behind. Yes. Cool. We take them from behind. Indeed. In a very huge staff. So, let's see about this. So, you have a belief about this. So, and actually everyone has a belief about this operation. So, we're going to go into a fight about this. Um, because this is would be a, the time to do that. Um, Sense. So, let us, let us do that. Let us... Um, set up a fight so the uh, the first thing we'll be focusing on is uh is the the successful ambush uh because that uh kind of like puts the sets, sets the tone for the rest of the fight if they can manage to get these guys down before they can give a shout of warning then you have a significant advantage if they can't then everyone will be up in arms 
Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do it. I, I'm considering if I should make it a bloody versus test instead, but let's let's make it a fight. Okay. So was that a versus test that is bloody, or a bloody versus test like a damned versus test? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know what the intention of uh, of Luke Crane was when he wrote that. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that it's about like being bloody. It's in involving blood, not being a damn bird fight. So, um, okay. So we have essentially two groups fighting two separate groups of people, right? So let's look at the, we look at you guys first. Um, so you're, you're jumping them. You, you succeed at jumping them. So you have the upper hand, which means you start at positional advantage. Mm -hmm. And they start at disadvantage. They have quarter staffs out. Um, Let's have a... So, Mino, you're gonna be leading this fight. Um, the other two will assist you. <coughs> I'm using quarter stuff too. Actually, as the point is to kill them before they get the shout off, I think you, you engage one of them and Evelyn engages the other one and Vinny will help you. Okay. Okay. So... Oh, God. Yeah, you, you definitely, you start in, in positional advantage for, for this. So what's your weapon of choice? I already told you. Uh, let me hear it again because I have a short, I have a memory like a goldfish. Me too. Quarter staff. Cool. So you got a staff out and then you, you thwack this, the first guard on the head with it. Um, okay, so let's script, shall we? I mean, actually, there's no reason to script the first one. Just give me, actually, give me a, a, a roll. Give me a staff check. We'll see how damaged they are. And then we'll see about the, the rest. So you get a free shot at them. Yay! If you have uh, staff, roll it. If you don't, give me a, uh, an agility check. No modifiers. Uh, take advantage. And uh, yeah. you get, uh, you take a plus one die more. Because you have a helping die from Vinny. So two. Yeah. No base obstacle. Uh, let's see the... No, no, no base obstacle. Three. Cool. So you hit and then you get two more successes. How much do you need to up your hit from a incidental to a mark? Sorry, one more time. Um, your staff has like a, an add value. So if you check your combat uh, sheet, your staff says add and then a number. Uh, two. Okay, so that means you can uh, you can use the two successes to uh, up your incidental hit to a moderate hit, which means that it changed from a B four to a B seven hit. Um, or you can, uh, but it, that would be, uh, and you can make it against any location you want because he doesn't get to decide what you hit. Then it will be a moderate hit. Okay, where? Uh, hit. Okay. I'm gonna so, shut the bastard up. Cool, so this guy takes a, a B7 head wound. Um, wow. let's, let's oh, see. right! Uh, my, uh, the quarter staff is... Moderate hit is B7 and severe hit is B10. Yep, this is, uh, this is more due to... Uh, this is a combination of being due to the weapon and due to your physical strength. Yep. But basically, if I sucked him, he would get a moderate B5 wound. But because I use a quarter staff, he gets a B7 wound yeah. to death base. Let's see, this is a superficial wound. What I is... would give myself a fucking light wound right before it's a moderate wound. So Yikes. It's mortal, traumatic, severe. Yes, so this is a midi wound for him. Okay, so. <laughs> He's you gonna die. He doesn't head. get help. He takes. Right? What? 
He's gonna die if he doesn't get help, right? Uh, in you know, yeah, in the long run, he will. Uh, presently, you just gave him like a really heavy thwack on the head, um, which comes out to him having um, minus two uh, dice. He has two wound dice, but that's not enough to put him down. But you start the fight at a uh, like with him being already injured, which is significant. Uh, and let's roll for Evelyn. See what happens on her end. I would have just like ran her process automatically, but she is uh, she's um, like a relationship for uh, Nikki, so we'll see. We'll let her stats speak for themselves. My head combined Chris and Nikki to Cricky, so you're playing the character Cricky now. No, wonderful. No. Did cool. she do any damage at all? A little? Yeah, she does. Um, so, you, first of all, you can take a... Um, you can also take a routine agility test if that matters to you. I don't know if it does. I rather want for my staff, though. Oh, right, yeah. So that's an, an untrained staff move, actually. So And because it's routine, it's not explicitly a... Um, it's not upgrading a stat. It's uh, being used for beginner's luck. So you're completely right about that. So take a, a, a one towards being learned. Uh, in your staff. Yay! I'm three out of seven now. Four cool. more times. And then I start with a B3 in staff. Awesome. Uh, so she hits him. Let's see what the add is on her knives. So she has an add of one on that thing. Okay, so she stabs this guy for a B5. I'm going to keep my notes over here instead. So this guy's taking a B7. That guy took a B5. Cool, and the B5 wound for this guy would be a light wound. So, cool. Yeah, definitely. All right. Fight happens. Um, at this point, they notice you, right? They notice they're being jumped. Um, so, you, AJ, let's start with you. Yes, mommy. Uh, give me a speed test to position against this guy. Uh, speed, speed, speed. Speed is key! And this dude in particular, he had the midi wound, so his speed test is gonna be it's gonna be pretty slow. He's he's like he's staggering. Poor oh, guy. I'm actually not feeling sad for him. Oh. What? So you're equal, and you're using a weapon of the same. I guess you're both using a weapon of the same length, so you couldn't really position advantage advantageously anyway. So you're engaged at at equally viable positions, the two of you. Uh, yeah. However, he is not strictly speaking wielding his staff now, is he? He isn't actually. He need, He's walking around with it in hand. Let's say he's wielding it. Um, it's kind of hard having your staff anywhere else. Yeah, right. So uh, you could have it tied to your back, but that would be stupid if you're a god. Yeah. Let's uh, let's have a look at your. Um, let's have a look at Evelyn's speed test versus this other guy. As I click the wrong character sheet. It happens. What shit? Okay, so she's at an advantage. She can't beat that. So, cool. Shit! She a fast motherfucker. Yep. So let's, uh, AJ, now we, we script. Uh, what's your reflexes? Uh, this is going to be a short uh, fight, I have a feeling. Not good. Not enough. My reflexes are gone. Where are they? There! Three! Cool. So, oh, script me good. three actions. Script you... F what? Yeah, you know, I like we did last time. Hearts. 
So scripting the three actions is we need to get the deck out, of course. So like so. So pick three cards uh, and paste them as your actions in the first, second, third volley, like we did last time. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna... Meanwhile, I am going to lay out the script for this guy. Okay. <clears throat> There. I don't know why you put yours out. I'll put mine out uh, below yours. Okay. in fact um, and then he is going to where's the thing I was looking for um, there it is. well stand and rule is near the blue ones cool there it is got it Uh, yeah, let's reveal the first volley then. Okay. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> cool. So he's trying to he's trying to avoid, and you're trying to counter strike. You you wait for a strike that's not coming. So make an attack roll. Um, what you do with, when you counter strike is you divide your I... your dice into attack and defense. Yeah. Uh, how much do you want to use for defense now that you know he's not attacking? One. Okay, so... I guess I have to use at least one. That's correct. Uh, so commit one die towards that, and then uh, the rest of your uh, dice for attacking with the staff, so the rest of your agility dice towards attacking, and take a helping die from your friend. Hi, so friend. basically the same, okay. I don't know, how many dice do you actually have? I have three, and then I have to remove one, so that's two, and then I get a helping die, so I have three again. Yep. <clears throat> one. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay, so you need two successes on a stat check for it to count as a hit, so you swing uh -huh. and you miss him. Boo! I need to quickly step away for a moment because I, uh, yeah, I, I need to quickly step away. I'll be right back. Huh? I'm confused. Perhaps his bladder was exploding. But he usually don't have an issue saying I need to use the bathroom. This is true. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I have sleepy cat. Sleepy cat, sleepy cat. No. Don't. Okay. You're not gonna sing. Boo. <laughs> also, Dad might come in soon and ask me to help him move the couch. Then you'll step away for a moment. Yeah, but I hope it'll be after this so you can continue with your fight. I've returned. All right, Hi, Daniel. So, let's see. Uh, good, so that's the first volley done with. We don't really need to roll for him because it's not of any consequence what he rolls. He's, he's trying to run away. That's basically it. 
yeah, he's he's dodging your strikes, right? He, you get he get he gets hit in the head, and he kind of like steps back and staggers and like waves his own staff as, as like kind of pulls away, while while you expect him to um, you expect him to strike at you, but then you just see like okay, so maybe there's an opening, and you go for it, but he he weaves out of the way, uh, staggers as uh... he is. I uh, I misinterpreted the cracking of his skull under my staff as being him actually not being injured that much and thought he would attack me. Cool. So let's uh, flip the next card. Second volley, go. Cool. Ooh. All right, so you start winding up for a great strike. Yes. Um, and he grabs his weapon. Yeah, he, he grabs his weapon like more fervently he grabs it like with both hands now he's he is on on point uh, and ready and you can kind of see him like he's trying to speak he's like he's he's gasping and heaving but every time he tries to like pull enough air in like suck enough air in to give a cry he's, he like flinches and very pained and like his head like jerks to the side he's like he's definitely concussed by that first strike oh, and we're hurry with the next one because that needs help uh, yeah, sure, let's wait with the next one. Oh, hurry or wait? Hurry! Oh, yeah, let's flip it then. Because what I'm gonna do is gonna take some time. Of course, it's you're gonna great strike, right? Yeah. So, what the f*** is a physical action? So, what he's going to do is he's going to try and open the door in the side of the building and rush in and get out of here. And that's probably not gonna work. No, because he's now he's gonna take a great strike. So, roll a great strike. What is it that does? Uh, so you roll whatever you're attacked with. So again, it's your um, it's your agility dice. But and you... I get help from Buddy and yeah. So you have three agility dice. You have plus one for help. Um, and uh, then you decide um, you decide if you are going to take a plus one to uh, to punch through his armor or plus one to uh, to your incidental mago superb damage. So you could up your damage by by B1 essentially, on any hit. I'm gonna use it to. He were wearing armor, right? Uh, he's wearing armor on the chest, and uh, and I've I see I've noted that they're also wearing rare braces, so their their armor extends to the shoulders, giving them effectively arm armor as well. Okay, then so... I'll punch through his fucking armor. Okay. You can uh, you can if you choose to. Um, you can like move your hit after you've made it, but that's fine. We'll just say that this is to punch through his armor. So you wind up for a great strike, and indeed, this is gonna it's gonna it's gonna damage his armor if you uh, if you hit it. So, and you might actually punch through it. So that's a hit. So you let's see. Yeah, he he def he chooses to take that hit in the torso uh, because that's where he has armor. So I am going to roll in the deep. Indeed, I'm going to roll in the deep. I need to use the right. Come on, die already so I can go help him. I've written that they're wearing brigandine. That is not correct. <laughs> this is a silly thing. Okay. Yeah. Can I kill him yet? Actually, I think it is correct, right? Because it's leather. I described it as leather. So yeah, it has to be. Yeah. Okay. Good. I am. I am not going. I'm not wrong. I am just slightly crazy. Fail it. I agree. Let's see if he fails it. Fail it. He does not. So you strike, and uh, your great strike, uh, like you hit him. But but uh, the armor prevents him from taking damage, so the armor soaks up the hit. And yeah. now well, I'll uh, yeah, I understand you have to go and do something, so you go and do that and be right back, and uh, I'll fix Evelyn uh, in the meantime. I mean, I should actually just let Evelyn help you from here on in. I guess I'll do that. So he can't really disengage this round, and. I'm going to I'm going to roll her a knife check. If she succeeds, she aces this guy and she murders him. Because I'm presently doing this wrong. I realized. Oh, how so? Um 
I'm just uh, I'm I'm messing up my orders, so I'm going to steer this ship back on course, and then then we'll see what happens. Can we get any successes here? We can. So, and he takes it again. He takes it in the, the chest armor. She moves it to his head. Bish, bash, bosh. Dude is down. Okay. <clears throat> and now we'll get this back on track. So the one left is the one who has a light wound. We'll see about scripting his actions. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm thinking while, I mean, we might as well use the time on you guys, right? So while this is happening, we go over to you guys. What are you doing? While, while unbeknownst to you, people are getting murdered on the other side of the building. Making out with the guards. Uh -huh. um, hmm. There is a check you could roll for that. Is it called seduction? Yeah. Don't have it. You need to speak up a bit. I do not have it. Cool. So I, I got the sensation that Chris was about to provide me with an actual answer. Nah, I didn't. My answer was an actual answer. Yeah, I'd say that's Rasmus all over. <laughs> what to do? What to do? What to do? I think no. I, th I think we'll play it smart uh, in this case, uh, since they are now alerted to us. Go on. Yeah, since they're now alerted to us, I am going to. I'm going to basically going to. Uh, I, uh, Nicky is going to drunkenly say to his two uh, his two sailor companions. Ah. Oh, down there, love. Down there. It's better that way. Go on. You love you, you fuckers. Um. So what is he actually doing? He's trying to convince them to go past the guards uh, and towards the rest of the group. Yeah, that's not the plan though, is it? No, he's trying to change the plan now that they've uh, been noticed. Okay. Basically, yes. As I said, I'm trying to play it smart. Cool. So, I mean, you can just do that. I don't think there's any cause to roll for that. Yeah, okay. I guess, so how do you follow his orders? Mm-hmm. Cool. So, you just start walking around the building. That's just where What? So, which yeah, are we, we're heading around the same way that the others went with the other guards. I mean, eventually you will get to that point, right? Yeah. The idea is, once we're out of eye, eye of um, direct eye line with the guards, we pass them. Obviously, um, uh, Nicky breaks character in as such that he obviously stands up and does his uh, able to move again. Occasionally, he mutters to make to make it sound like he's still. Drunk until they're out, until he's shut out of earshot. But otherwise, yeah, just keep going around normally. Yep. Change of plans. Fortunately, yeah. thought they'd go for that. We'll link, we'll link up with the others. You think? You don't think we should take these two out? 
Uh, I was under the impression it was three rather than two. Three, three have yeah. noticed you, and there's a fourth right around there. Um, is the fourth one on his own? Not enough of his own. Okay. So if we attacked him, it would eventually be four on three. Yeah. And you know, we're four on three, and two of us not being very good fighters. Those, those are bad odds. I With think that in yeah. 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 Um, I think that's unless something happens. How do you will suggest you go? Perhaps then retreating to a safe distance and using ranged attacks might be beneficial. <sighs> With that smile of his that just says. Now you're going to let me lose. Are you being a bitch towards our employer? No, mm -hmm. I would never. I'm merely suggesting we go to a safer distance and use ranged attacks. I should uh, just comment on the, like, without painting you a precise image of the layout of this place, this place is cramped enough in terms of, like, urban cityscape that retreating to a safe distance and shooting from there means still means getting into a fight. It, we're not it's not open enough for us to use range and cover. Mm. So you'd have to like get up top of a roof or something to have uh No, you you need to have something more than even that. Oh. Wow. Mm. Let's see. Hmm, just thinking. At least in this part of town. If this has been like on on at the, in a different end of town, if this has been in the the new town docks where there's more space, then you could argue for uh, for range and cover. Uh, in this case, you're at the in the Pike Market dock area, meaning shit's crammed, yo. Okay, my, my suggestion then, having thought about it, um. No, not yet. We still, we still want to keep it quite quiet. So I shake my head, or Nikki shakes his head to Jihaoji and says, "We loop around, link up with the others, get in from there, or take them all on at once." And I, and when if that fails, then you you can cut loose. You know, that's cool. So meanwhile, while this is going on, and you guys are making down the side of the the building, um, mm -hmm. let's finish up the fight that was going on between uh, between the other group. So, yep. AJ, you're back, right? Yeah. Good. So, will you lead the, the strike against this last guy? Um, give me a speed test against the one that the one that lived. Did the other one die? Evelyn jumped in and, and gutted the guy you, fin you failed to finish off. Uh, now there's just the one guy who took the light wound in the beginning. Oh, sure. He died now. Okay. So... Of course, he's the only guy left, so it's it's basically, you'll be leading that, they will be assisting you, he'll be opposing you. Yeah. Good. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, he's armed with a quarter staff and so are you, so there's no point in scripting for a uh, positional advantage. Yes. So, um, just start scripting, I guess, script your actions. I'll do the same. Okay. Uh. <sighs> Which ones were it that took more than one action? Uh, if you uh, check the handouts. There is, a, in, in the handouts, there is a thing called the fight action scripting reference. Ooh, uh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And it's action scripting, not in the programming language. It's not a, yeah. I think if we had to, uh, to script our battles in a programming language, it would take much longer. Hmm. Whoa, draw weapon is two actions. Yeah. 
Ah, then you made a mistake before. Uh, yeah, but I, uh, you, there are like, um, there are circumstances we'll yes. surrounding it. Like uh, in this case, for example, he's walking around with a quarter staff. He already has one hand on it, so it only mm -hmm. takes him one action to 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 wield it. Whereas if he had like worn it on his back for so, if he had done a tello that quarter staff, it would have taken him two to three actions. Mm. You know what? He doesn't give a fuck. Cool. Um, is that mine? Did I take this out? No, is the, that you, these are mine. Oh, sorry! <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> it's just, but hey. Where did all the cards come from? I didn't take out any cards. He only has two? Actually, he has a re higher reflexes than you, so I should throw in another card. There's no reason to use it. Wow. Overcompensating much? Uh, you should zoom out. Uh, you need to. Uh, you have a reflex of three, so you need to have one card in each, in each volley. Oh, like so, right? I didn't see that. Cool. I need a better reflexes. <laughs> How do I get better reflexes? Uh, you up your uh, your speed stat and your agility stat, I believe. No, your speed or your perception. I think it's speed and perception. But they're both better than my reflexes. I don't actually remember, but I, I know speed is involved. I don't remember what... Uh, what I'll exactly. look. It's an average of perception, agility, and speed rounded down. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. You right. are most welcome. So, uh, first, uh, first volley, let's reveal. Yeah. Okay. So you set up for a great strike. Um, there's nothing to counter strike there, no? Yeah, there's nothing for him to counter strike, so he just relocates one die to his defense and then he strikes at you and he strikes at you again. Um, mm. Let's see. What's his staff skill? Okay. Now, the only thing I'm going for here is. Don't be a powerhouse, don't be a powerhouse, don't be a powerhouse. No, they're not. They're 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 professionals, but they're uh they're not masters of their craft. Nice. Staves one. Cool. Um so and actually he has one less die than I rolled because as we mentioned uh, before, he has to relocate one die to his defense pool. So that's it's no hits on his Counter-Strike. So he doesn't hit you on, his, on the Counter-Strike. So you start winding up for a great strike, and he pulls back into a defensive posture, uh, thinking that you're about to strike immediately, but instead he's like, he's wasting time, and as he realizes that, he tries jabbing at you, and fails because he's wasted his momentum. But then, since he's faster than you, he bolts in for just a quick uh, just a standard strike on you uh that ends up ow ends up hitting you so he strikes you i'm um, so happy they don't have fate indeed it's uh he could have he could have opened that one up okay so he hits you for an incidental uh you're not wearing armor are you no okay so there's no reason for him not to up it so he ups it to a uh, to a b6 wound so you take a B6 wound from the staff as he, he strikes you uh, like in the ribs with the, with the staff. Yeah. Doesn't even face him. Then he, as he does that, uh, he, he's been stabbed, right? So he has, he's suffering through the pain as well as the other guy was, but he's not concussed. So he manages to heave a great, like a great gulp of air. And then he, he shouts for help. No! 
uh, you guys, you hear a, sh a cry for help rolling up the alleyway uh, that you're moving down, and you you hear the response behind you uh, as people scramble to to respond. I think um, Jihauji turns to Nikki and and says, "Ambush." Yeah, you could actually ambush them from where you are. We'll if see what happens me? with that after this exchange. Uh, right now, um, you you oh. are we are gonna reveal the next volley, AJ. God damn it, Evelyn! Oh That's yeah, and just... also curious by the way, just before we move on, uh, you took uh, a B six wound. Does that uh, give you any wound penalties? What oh, kind of wound is that for you? It's a light wound. It's a light wound. Okay, so. Here's what happens. So when you take a light wound, you lose a die, right? So you have now now you have a wound die. That means you need to make a steel test. Ah, okay. So give but me a steel test. Just routine stuff. I can't use your routine steel chest for anything, Daniel. Give me something difficult. Uh, let me just quickly check something before you roll, uh, because I think you might get a bonus on this one. Because this is a. Complete. This is a mundane situation, and you are surrounded by friends. Define friends. I guess that's actually true. There's probably not a lot of. You probably don't derive a lot of safety from the presence of these people, but I derive more safety from their presence than my brothers. But that's about his fear stuff, not them. Yeah, so yeah, you, this is about feeling safe in a group of friends or allies. That is probably not what's happening. I'm, I'm guessing you're not feeling safe in this situation. Um, yeah, no, this is just, yeah, this is a fight. So roll it, uh, roll it flat. Give me your, your steel. Show me your steel. Cool. Poof. So three successes. What's your hesitation? Four, but I derived one, so no hesitation. So you, you... You have four hesitation, and then you have uh, cold headed. Is that right? Cool, cool headed. headed. Yeah. What What does that help with? Uh, surprises and other stuff. Oh, like uh, it has a specific thing. So what? Yeah, I'm trying to find it. It's on the first okay, page. Um, cool headed. It's because it says it reduces hesitation, and then I have to. Go all the way. Ah, surprise and fear by one. Okay, cool. So this is this is for one pain. Case. So you hesitate for one action. So the next action you make um, would not happen. So this this great strike action instead is a um, is one of the hesitation actions. So do you stand and drool, um, fall prone and beg for mercy, run screaming or swoon, or? I um, think he, you know, hesitates. After the jabs or its rips, because that probably hits a nerve, so it's the stand and drool. But you know, ah, how? Sure, of course. Like you're you're holding back, and you're being like, shit. You stagger because you just took a blow to the gut. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, so you do that. He's avoiding, um, trying to. I, is he avoiding though? He could. Yeah, he is. Let's say he's avoiding. So he, he's, he's just like, oh, I hit him. Ah! Yeah. I oh. did it. I did it, mom. And then he jumps back. Um, yeah. And then, after that, reveal. Could I continue my great strike to... Or is that lost? Uh, you... I, I will... Uh, it No, it, it would be lost. So, it's the next okay. action you've scripted. Then he's just angry. Fuck you, slum! <laughs> cool. So, this guy is going to split his pool into uh, two pools of two. Uh, you can roll your strike with your agility dice and take two helping dice for uh, for your companions. Yeah, I have to find my combat thingy again because the the thing about having taps in the top and then having taps at the top of the sheet itself is a little confusing sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, you accidentally Part use the wrong ones quite often. Yep. Phase obstacle 1? Yep. Okay. Wow. So he's rolling two for defense. And he only has one die for offense. So he's failing his defense. And let's look at his offense. That means I hit him. In dirt. So let's just roll it here. 
Cool, so he, he hits on the offense. Okay, so you did a strike, you got two successes, that means you hit, so um, you deliver a mark hit to him. Not a mark, uh, an incidental hit. What's your uh, incidental hit with the staff? That was uh, a seven, right? Incidental... Ah, ah, ah. Combat. I keep clicking, clicking the other ones. That is quarter staff. That's the E. That's a B4. Okay. ED would be a B7. Cool. So he takes another light wound and significantly affected. So we need to roll his. Um, we need to roll his steel for that. We should have rolled that before too, but because I fucked it up, we, are, you. we aren't. Um. Fail it miserably. This is absolutely something. Beg for mercy. Um, Die. I, t I too am learning this game as we play, so here here comes the steel check. Yeah, fail the steel by a lot so I can murderize you. He does, by a lot. What is his hesitation? His hesitation is, I just saw it, it I think his hesitation is six. So for the next, uh, the next one exchange and then some more, he is not in a good way yeah he he's running and screaming i think so he he so we see like this exchange between you right you you have help so we see evelyn like darting around the guy and we see um we see Vinny like flanking him on the other side and then you pushing in like from directly from the front and this guy is out he is outmatched significantly so so <laughs> so you we see him uh, like uh, fight fight you off as best as he's able and as he's fucking that up, uh, he takes like uh, a hit uh, where, where you're striking him on the torso, right? Uh, if I can, I always go for the head. Okay, uh, and yeah, yeah, no, you, you can't actually do that. So you strike him on the no, torso. No, but if I can, I go for the head. Otherwise, you decide where I hit. Yeah, that's true. Because so it's an incidental hit. In, in this case, because I've been fucking this uh, fight up so much, uh, we'll, I'll just give it to you as like my penance for, for screwing it up. And um, and you you strike him on the head, meaning that his armor doesn't apply. So I don't roll that. And he he's had enough. He's fleeing. He's limbering up uh, up the alleyway, um, run, running, screaming. Uh, he drops his quarter staff as he turns around to run. Okay, so he, he's running away. Yeah, he's running away. He's not making that. We'll find out. <laughs> okay, so this is the situation as as we get to the top of the next city, exchange. I will. <laughs> so, we we cut back to you guys for a moment, right? Uh, she how just looked at Nikki and was like, ambush, and as you do that, just like this, the, the three seconds of whatever, like whatever Nikki answers, or if Nikki's standing there thinking, I don't know, but it takes like just three seconds, and then you hear screaming from from the other direction. So now like. People are running, a guy comes running up the alleyway towards you, while the guards that you just passed comes running down the other end of the alleyway towards you. Um. But the, the guys that are, like, the guards are shouting as if it's, like, encouragement, like, come on, let's go! And the other guy's like, ah! <laughs> So they're both coming opposite directions. Um... In the span of just a, a second and a half, Nikki looks both ways rapidly and then just yells out, well, yells out, um, Jihau, Jihau, smoke him, and then starts giggling. Cool. Um, good thing he said it because I was about to. Cool. Yes. So, um, so I begin, with I begin spell weaving. Cool. Hmm. Okay. Uh, turn towards the many, not the one. Awesome. <laughs> you have a feeling Big Bro is gonna get that one. He's afraid. Um, I have a feeling I'd rather my lightning strikes those than, you know, just one person, in so, case it jumps. As we get to the top of this round, um, let's talk about, like, how we are going to... How are we going to play this? Um, what groups are we dividing this opposition into? Are you all gonna take individual actions? Oh, are you going to help each other? What's what's? How do you how do you figure you're gonna play this out? Well, 
I can say what uh, Minnow is going to do the second he runs away. He's going to chase him down and make sure he doesn't move again. Cool. So we'll get to that. So that's definitely like you, you're moving independently of the others, uh, of, of uh, Nicholas and Shihao. And yep. you're being held by Evelyn and by Vinny. Uh, Shihao and, uh, and uh, Nicholas, you can't really help each other in this case because... Uh, well, situation being that one of you is casting a spell and the other definitely isn't. And well, I Joseph guess can't help go in front of me, so I don't get hit as the first thing. Mm. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. I don't want to lose this spell and fry us all. So we'll we'll find but out what happens you know with that. that happen, um, but... We'll find out what happens with that as we start on top of the next exchange. Uh, but we'll come back and play that exchange uh, after a break. So we'll take a break. Yeah. You guys can can figure out like what's up and uh, we'll come back and we'll run the rest of this fight uh, ideally a as it was intended without me making a clown fiesta of it. So, sure. be right back, you guys. Uh, come back and then watch more Burning Wheel in just a moment. So, uh, we'll, we'll take a break. Bye.